on the news, federal government plans evacuation of over 2,000 Nigerians from Cairo on Tuesday, urges Nigerian students to remain on campus. Inspector General of Police launches investigations into Adamawa Rex's role in controversial elections. And Somolu orders demolition of 20 buildings in Banana Island. Hello and welcome to News Now on TV360 Nigeria. I am Sinisola Adigmu. More than 5,000 Nigerians appear to be trapped in conflict-torn Sudan as evacuation of citizens has not commenced. However, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Oyema, says the federal government is working hard to ensure the safe evacuation of Nigerians in Sudan. He said unlike other countries trying to evacuate their diplomatic staff first, Nigerians would want diplomatic staff to coordinate the evacuation of its citizens. Meanwhile, students who make up 80% of those stranded have been advised to remain in their universities to avert danger. The chairman, CEO, Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, NITCOM, Abike Dabiri Erewa, also cautioned against certain mobilization efforts of the National Association of Nigerian Students, NANT, involving the pooling of funds to facilitate the transportation of Nigerian students in the North African country away from their campuses. Now, for more insight into this development, Shewon Shoile, Global Affairs Analyst, joins me now. Thank you very much for joining me. Now, we understand that an evacuation in conflict areas is not the easiest thing to do. Now, just how difficult do you think this is going to be for the Nigerian government since the planned evacuation, which is expected to begin tomorrow, would obviously be by road? Well, um, Sudan is one country that has a history of crisis and conflicts. And um, because um, its geography, having been located within three uh, most uh, prized, if you like, regions of Africa, straddling the, uh, you know, the, the, the region between the Red Sea, the Sahel region, and the Horn of Africa, that makes that place uh, a hotbed of conflicts. And every serious government must plan for, particularly if you take into cognizance the de political development in that region from 2019, when the former president, the, dictate, uh, the dictator Omar Bashar was um, upstaged, uh, one would, one would uh, believe or one would think that the Nigerian government will have, um, looking at what has happened for over 10 days now, should have been more proactive in evacuating the Nigerians trapped in that country. Having said that, now that uh, we now know that by tomorrow, um, the Nigerians trapped in that country will be evacuated by road. We only uh, hope that um, that um, operations will be done very seamlessly, and then um, there will there will be no casualty, you know, to the people and the to, to, to the Nigerians that were uh, that will be um, evacuated at the end of the day. All right. Now, another issue is that any sort of evacuation will need approval from the Sudanese government. But given the current situation in the country, will safety guarantees from one side of the two groups involved in the ongoing conflict be enough to guarantee safe evacuation? That is my concern, because that we have two factions of the Sudanese military, you know, claiming the control of uh, you know, uh, important, uh, you know, infrastructure in that country, the airport at Khartoum, and of course, uh, the other areas around the country, one will only pray that the government will be able to find some form of um, agreement with both, uh, both uh, parties so that uh, the operations will not be jeopardized. It, but if you ask me, it's going to be very difficult considering the situation at the moment. Things are um, sorted out without any danger on both sides. Shewon Shoile, Global Affairs Analyst, thank you very much for your insight. President-elect Bola Tinubu has returned to Nigeria after over one month away in Europe via the Inam Diazikiwe International Airport, Abuja, 
on Monday. The former Lagos State Governor, who was officially out of Nigeria since March 22, returned about one month before his inauguration on March 29, 20, May 29, 2023. Tinubu, who was received by a cheery crowd of supporters, returned with his wife, Senator Oluremi, and they were received by the Vice President-elect Kashim Shetima, Plato State Governor Simon Lalong, and Speaker of the House of Representatives Femi Gwajapiamila, amongst many other high-ranking ranking members of the party. The Inspector General of Police Usman Al-Khali Baba has issued an investigation into alleged misconduct of Yunusa Hudu Ari, the resident electoral commissioner for the Adamawa state elections during the supplementary polls. This comes after the commission's appeal to the IGP seeking an investigation on Hudu Ari, who illegally announced Aisha Dahiru of the All Progressives Congress, APC, as the winner of the governorship elections in the state. The force public Relations officer Olumu Iwade Jobi in a statement on Sunday said the police is in receipt of the letter from INEC dated April 18, 2023. Adejobi explained that the commission called on the police to investigate and possibly prosecute the wreck for his actions. He added that the IGP has directed an investigative team to work in collaboration with the INEC to expedite action on the contents of the letter. The United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, has attributed the abysmal response to routine immunization in Nigeria partly to vaccine hesitancy. The Chief of Health and HIV AIDS, UNICEF Nigeria, Edward Salades, made this known in Abuja at a media briefing on the release of the State of the World's Children Global Report. While he regrets the poor health system in the country, the UNICEF chief believes that collaboration with the Nigerian government would strengthen the country's primary health care. Our correspondent Emeka Amako files in this report from Abuja. Vaccines are the world's safest methods to protect children from life-threatening diseases. For over two centuries, Vaccines have safely reduced the scourge of diseases like polio, measles and smallpox, helping children grow up healthy and happy. Despite these long-standing benefits, low immunization levels still persist, as indicated in a UNICEF report on the State of the World's Children 2023. Eduardo Salades, the UNICEF Nigeria Chief of Health, says about 2.2 million Nigerian children are denied a single dose of vaccination every year, an unenviable record which makes Nigeria the country with the second highest number of zero-dose children in the world. Regarding vaccine hesitance, what we are seeing globally is that vaccine hesitance has increased. However, here in Nigeria, even the trend is as well here, what we think is like is the main problem that the population is facing is actually lack of access to the services. It's like in places like because of insecurity, because of conflict, or just because of poverty, like we're seeing in urban slums in Lagos, for example, or in the north in Sokoto or Sanfara. What we're seeing is that there is a lack of access, that the services, the health services, they are not reaching the most vulnerable. So actually we think that should be our priority. If we work jointly with the communities to bring the services to the communities, we are 100% sure that the vaccination coverage will increase. To adequately address the issue of vaccine hesitancy, a whole-of-society approach is needed in earning the robust participation of parents and guardians through awareness creation. We have to make sure that we inspire confidence in the parents and caregivers and communities for them to be able to accept the vaccine. And what we are doing in this, in this area is working with a network of voluntary community mobilizers in the, the, the states that are most affected. And most of them that uh, Eduardo has already mentioned, they are the ones that have the most zero-dose children. These voluntary community mobilizers are mature women. They are selected by the communities. They are, they are good listeners and good com communicators and can convince the, the public about the need to take the vaccine, the importance of getting your children vaccinated. They are trusted. And we uh, are investing a lot in this group of, uh, of women uh, so that you know, we can gain that confidence uh, in the community. On vaccine storage, 
UNICEF says it is important that they are stored in the right place and in the right quality. UNICEF is in partnership with Gavi to expand um, um, the, web, the cold chain stores in Lagos, in Abuja, as well as in Kano. Uh, what it also means is that we need to make sure that um, uh, as we are carrying out these outreach activities, we have the right cold chain equipment at the health facility level and also for the, for the uh, health workers to be able to take the vaccines to the communities. So we need the, the, the refrigerators, which can, may not necessarily operate only on electricity because we know the electricity gaps in, this, in, in the country. So these are, uh, they can operate on solar and then we, they also, we also work with the uh, vaccine carriers. With the collaboration of the federal government and critical partners, UNICEF's target to reach identified 100 priority local government areas and 1,200 wards with zero-dose children and to catch up with 1 million missed children in the next 700 days is achievable. More than a week after the collapse of a seven-story building in Banana Island area of Lagos State, Governor Papajide Sanwolu has ordered the demolition of three two-story buildings in the area. The governor ordered the demolition when he visited the scene of the collapsed building on Saturday. Sanwolu blamed the unfortunate incident on the irresponsibility of the developers and some of the citizens that just wanted to make quick money. The governor further disclosed that an external seven-man committee has been set up by the state government to independently ascertain the remote cause of the recent building collapse. He added that their findings will further strengthen a work plan that can be enforced going forward. We've given an order to stop work, not only at this site, but in all of the construction sites in Banana. Um, and I think the, the exercise we're doing today is not really just about this location. You've all seen the the extent of um, what I would call an approved extension into the water um, at the back of, of each of the land that is abutting a water. Um, you can see that the, the original line for Banana Island is even not where we are. It's way in front there. And you can see that there's been several, several um, extensions that have been granted um, by both the Federal Ministry of Works, you know, Housing, and NIWA. These are the two federal agencies that have been cooperative for those extensions. Um, they've done these extensions even without our knowledge. And we have responsibility for building approvals and rest of it. And from what I've been told, um, all of the four buildings at the back, uh, they never even applied for approvals. But what we're doing right now is set up a small um, external committee, a seven-man committee, who we've given them two weeks to independently also ascertain you know, what has gone on here. Um, and so they should finish their, their work by... Uh, maybe to, towards the end of next week or thereafter. And so this will also further strengthen our hand, you know, to be able to come up with robust, you know, um, work plan that we can, you know, enforce um, going forward you know, in all of these places. It's, it's, um, it's, it's heartbroken each time we have to go through this, you know, and it shows sometimes how irresponsible, you know, both uh, developers, some of our citizens that just want to make quick money, and of course, our own officers who are also not alive to their responsibility. Still in Lagos, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, has arrested a widower, Ahmed Ariyibi, and a divorcee, Silifat Akombi, at the Moritala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos, for alleged drug trafficking. Femi Babafemi, the director, media and advocacy of the agency, disclosed that the suspects who were going for lesser Hajj in Saudi Arabia were arrested for attempting to export 14.4 kilograms of cocaine concealed in Lagos and Ankara fabrics. He added that Aribi was arrested on April 20 at the screening point of the MMIA Terminal 2 during outward clearance of Qatar Airways passengers traveling from Lagos via Doha to Medina, Saudi Arabia. Baba Femi also explained that on April 19, NDLEA officers at the Terminal 2 of the airport also arrested Silifat Akombi with 2.90 kilograms of cocaine. 
The Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps has arrested three suspected pipeline vandals who specialize in cutting oil pipelines to sell in Kwale in Dokwa West Council area of Delta State. Parading the suspects at the NSCDC Delta headquarters at Sabah, the new state commandant, Jimo, said his men also seized illegally refined products in Ethiopia West. The new commandant of the NSCDC in Delta State said the latest arrest is made possible by his proactive approach in setting a special squad to go all out for these criminals. He also underscores the impact of collaboration with members of public in tackling vandalism and oil theft. The result of that special unit I formed is the result is what I'm getting in these three arrests I made in the last three weeks. And by the special grace of God, just as I've said to you, one of the major things that will help us out is by communication. In the sense that I will indulge the community at any point in time, whatever they see, they should try and alert us. We can't do it all. We rely mainly on intelligent gathering to get this issue, to get these people arrested. For instance, that of the adulterated one, it was cited along Worry, and they alerted my men at Coco that they know their route is along that Coco to enter through Bini. Among all the three states that is, that is acting on it, that is River, Baesa, sorry, four, Edo and Delta. I have the highest number of personnel in that location for now. Aside from that, I equally have officers at different locations in different local communities. We'll go on a break here, but still to come, World Bank says Nigeria's fiscal and debt pressures will increase if petrol subsidy is not phased out by June 2023. There are details of the story and more right after this break. Welcome back. Now here is a recap of some of our top stories tonight. More than 5,000 Nigerians appear to be trapped in conflict-torn Sudan as evacuation of citizens have not commenced. However, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Joffrey Yema, says the federal government is working hard to ensure the safe evacuation of Nigerians in Sudan. He said unlike other countries trying to evacuate their diplomatic staff first, Nigeria would want diplomatic staff to coordinate the evacuation of its citizens. We also told you that the Inspector General of Police, Usman al Khali Baba, has issued an investigation into alleged misconduct of Yunusa Hudu Ari, the resident electoral commissioner for Adamawa State, during the state's supplementary election. This comes after the Commission's appeal to the IGP seeking an investigation on Hudu Ari, who illegally announced Aisha Dahiro of the All Progressives Congress, APC, as the winner of the governorship elections in the state. Now, in case you missed any of our news bulletins or for more updates, you can catch us on Lamex World TV or log on to our website on www.tv360nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram and YouTube at TV360 Nigeria. On Facebook, we're at TV360 Online. Five people in the United Kingdom have died from the new Arcturus COVID strain as it continues to spread around the world. The new subvariant of COVID has already spread across the UK and is present in all regions of England, apart from the Northeast, amid some reports it has a new symptom. According to the latest technical briefing from the UK Health and Security Agency, there have been at least 135 cases of Arcturus Omicron XBB 1.16 in the UK. The United Kingdom Health and Security Agency has warned that teenagers could be at risk of rare diseases after a drop-off in vaccinations during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
In 2021 and 2022, 69% of 13- and 14-year-olds received a jab protecting them against tetanus, diphtheria and polio, down 7% on the previous year. However, parents are being urged to make sure young people are up to date with their vaccines before they leave school. We'll take another break here and return with more updates in business, the international scene as well as sports. Just stay with us. Opinions are free, facts are sacred, the truth is universal. How in practical terms can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? President must see himself as the president of the Federal Republic. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad Basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa Forest. On DG360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion, facts and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians say in this uh, part of the world. The new Nigeria is possible, the future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for go any governor to look for grant for ranching. DG360, dissecting the issues. Welcome back. Mary Kano is on standby with business updates. Over to you, Mary. Thank you, Simisela. Welcome to Business News. The National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, says the average price of 5 kilograms of cooking gas increased from 4,600 naira recorded in February to 4,610 naira in March. The report says the March 2023 price represented a 0.22% increase compared to what was obtained in February 2023. On a year-on-year -year basis, the increase was 22.03% recorded in March 2022. On state analysis, the report showed that Quara State recorded the highest average price for 5 kg cooking gas followed by Abuja and Adamawa State. On the other hand, River State recorded the lowest price followed by Abia and Anambra State respectively. And the World Bank says Nigeria's fiscal and debt pressures will increase if petrol subsidy is not phased out in June 2023. In its recently released report titled Macro Poverty Outlook for Nigeria, April 2023, the Bretton Woods Institution said all price booms previously supported the Nigerian economy, but the situation has changed since 2021. According to the report, the World Bank says macroeconomic stability has weakened amid declining oil production costly fuel subsidies, exchange rate distortions and monetization of the fiscal deficit. The bank also disclosed that the worsening economic environment has further pushed millions of Nigerians into poverty. And that's all on business news. Back to you, Simisela, for the rest of the news. Thank you, Mary, for the update. And on the global scene, the UK Development Minister, Andrew Mitchell, has warned British citizens trapped in Sudan to stay indoors and wait for further information as fighting rages around them. About 2,000 UK nationals are stuck in the African nation amid growing anger at the government. He insisted that the government was doing everything it could to rescue trapped Britons. It's now time for Entertainment Report on News Now. Nollywood actor.
actress Empress Injama's ex-lover, Judge Wade, has been arrested in Liberia. The actress made this known via Instagram stories on Monday where she shared a video of Wade being led in handcuffs. Empress has previously accused Wade of domestic abuse and blackmail after the relationship went sore. In a live stream shared via her business page last December, the actress revealed that the engagement video posted on her personal page earlier in the month was made under duress, adding that she had been scammed, beaten and held hostage by Wade before her eventual escape. Even after her escape, Wade continued to threaten the actress. He eventually leaked the nude pictures and videos via a WhatsApp group chat in which he added blogs and several people. Popular Nigerian singer Davido has found himself in a scuffle with an unruly fan during his highly anticipated timeless concert at Lagos Tafawa Balewa Square on April 23rd when a fan unexpectedly stormed the stage and approached him in a frightening manner. The fan unexpectedly stormed the stage and approached Davido while he dazzled the audience with his performance. The quick thinking singer swiftly turned around and almost threw a punch at the intruder before security personnel intervened and escorted the individual off stage. The viral video of the altercation has caused a buzz on social media with many applauding Davido's ability to defend himself and handle the situation with composure while others speculate on the motive behind the fans' actions. That's it in the entertainment segment of News Now. In sports, thousands of joyous Napoli supporters greeted the team on Monday as they returned from their victory over Juventus, which brought the prospect of a historic Serie A title within touching distance. Fans flew banners and flags and sang songs as the team arrived shortly at the Naples Capodicino Airport from Turin. Napoli's 1-0 triumph at Juventus on Sunday places them 17 points clear at the top off the table. Well, that's all on News Now this evening. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Simisola Adjigun. Bye for now.